brainchild, and uh, I'd like him to talk about it. <laughs> My name is Evelyn Chaburi, so while she's setting up, I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm a co-chair of the SEPS Youth Council with uh, AJ Garstein, and uh, I'd like you guys to think of drug paraphernalia in our gas stations as sewage sludge. <laughs> She's quick. The odor it's causing in our youth's environment needs to be taken away. All right, so what we're going to talk to you about is uh, two proposed ordinances, and I'll let them do all of the talking. Um, but what I want to really say is that our Steps Youth Council has been working really hard on this project since August. Um, We've come a long way in the process, and I also want to mention that these are all 6th to 12th grade students in Southington. 6th to 12th grade. So, when you're thinking about middle school and high school students coming up with a town ordinance, that's a, I think that's a pretty big deal and a pretty big accomplishment. Um, so overall, our Youth Council's goals, we want to make a sustainable and lasting impacts in the community for youth for generations to come. Um, so every project we do, we try to make sure that even if steps were to go away, um, our projects are lasting. Um, and all of these projects also, we try to prevent any and all risk-taking behaviors. That could be anything from bullying to substance use um, to texting and driving to you name it. We, we try and prevent any and all risk-taking behaviors. So I will let um, our students explain our presentation tonight. But this is um, two proposed ordinances, one for alcohol and one for uh, drug paraphernalia in <coughs> gas stations and uh, convenience stores. Thanks. Okay, so this is our agenda for the night. Um, first, we'd like to go over our ideas, the rationale behind creating the ordinance, our process to get approved, as well as our risks assessment results, and the, of course, the ordinance. Hey guys, when you come up to the podium, please state your name. Hi, my name is Sarah Lamb, and our first step in the process was that the Youth Council learned about ordinances from our senior members, as well as uh, Town Councilman Chris Palmirai, who's a member of our STEPS Advisory Board and a member of the Ordinance Committee. We presented four ideas to Mr. Palmieri, and we talked about the impacts and limitations of each. And then afterwards, we chose two ordinances to pursue, and then we presented to the Ordinance Committee on August 21st of 2013. Hi, my name is Matt Gary, and we'd like to propose the following. Along with tobacco products, um, which is which are cigarettes, all e-cigarettes and tobacco delivery products and devices such as bongs, rolling papers, and pipes, which can be used for illegal drugs, can be placed in an area of the store away from public ac access, as such as behind the counter. In addition, it's important to continue to ensure that minors are discouraged from drinking alcohol. Therefore, all signs that advertise drink special, 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 sorry, including but not limited to happy hour advertisements must indicate the special is for persons 21 and older. My name is Natalie Myrick. Um, so in regards to the first ordinance about the drug paraphernalia at gas stations, why is this important to us? Well, first off, we think it's very important, um, the concept of out of sight, out of mind. If students and any adults in the community are exposed to this, um, they're going to be more inclined to um, take part in these risk, risky behaviors, and that's what we want to avoid. So we're going to kind of try to keep stuff out of sight and out of mind, and that will change the perception of these risk-taking behaviors. Um, we also don't want our gas stations to be sending the wrong message to the youth that it's okay if it's near the counter, that it's something that you should be doing. That's not true, and that's not the message we would like to send. Um, anyways, you have to be 18 or older to purchase these products, so um, what's the point of having them lying around right in sight? 
Um, additionally, not many people smoke out of a pipe, out of a pipe um, tobacco, so why glamorize the action of doing so by having the pipes right in plain sight? Um, the checkout line at gas stations is just like the checkout line at a grocery store. We don't have um, tobacco products at the grocery store, so why should we have them at a gas station? Um, and most importantly, e-cigarettes are becoming very prevalent in high school and middle school, and that's not the message we want to be sending to students that it's okay to have it. If they're selling it at the grocery store or at um, the gas convenience stations, we don't want them to be seeing it. The less they're exposed to it, the less they'll be inclined to follow suit. I'm Connor McDonough, and an extra rationale court case we found was the Larler Tobacco vs. Riley that took place in 2001, and it was a Connecticut case, which it upheld the decision that required retailers to place tobacco products behind the counters and required customers to have contact with the salesperson before handling them. That's good. We believe that in order to truly protect Southington residents, and prevent tobacco and e-cigarette use, tobacco delivery products and e-cigarettes should be behind the counter with the cigarettes and cigars. Hi, I'm Julia Brillo. Um, some more steps that we took. Um, Kelly and Evelyn met with Mark Shoda to draft an ordinance using the two ideas we had. And during this time, Kelly and Evelyn worked with other Connecticut coalitions to find towns who had done similar work with town ordinances. Hi, my name is Trevor Rogers. Next, we had to see if the issue that we thought was big really occurred in Southington. So the Youth Council, in conjunction with the Steps Advisory Board, conducted a risk assessment with all the gas stations and convenience stores to understand our local conditions in town. Hi, I'm Morgan Massam. Um, what is in our convenience stores? In our risk assessment, we found that almost all convenience stores and gas stations sell e-cigarettes and rolling papers. Most e-cigarettes are sold right at the counter. Um, Ten convenience stores sell hookahs. Five sell bongs, pipes, and bowls. Three sell, no no, sell nothing. Um, five gas stations sell everything on the list. And Alta and Danowski are in extremely close vicinity to two of the five gas stations. You'll notice when we get to our ordinance changes why we have included nicotine products based on our findings of e-cigarettes. Their use is on the rise with both teens and adults. Hi, I'm Josiah Mom. More steps. Next, a group of youth council members presented to the Ordinance Committee on December 3rd, 2013. Since they liked the ideas, we continued to finalize the ordinance with Mark Shota and make revisions. This presentation is our last step in the process. Hi, I'm Kai Seaton, and the bottom line is buying paraphernalia should not be a convenience. My name is Nathaniel Huff, uh, you may call me Nate, and uh, all I want to say, er, our second ordinance is that uh, alcohol is not al alcohol advertisement, and no person or business shall allow the advertisement of alcohol, sorry, oh, wait, yeah, lost my place, okay, no person or business shall allow the advertisement of alcohol or an alcoholic event, i.e. happy hour or open bar event, when such advertisement or menu is placed in view of the general public unless a notice is affixed or the advertisement stating clearly, yeah, or general public unless a notice, okay, uh, advertisement stating clearly that the person or business requiring the showing of identification for the consumption or purchase of the alcohol and no one under the age of 21 shall be allowed to consume or purchase the alcohol. <coughs> Hi, I'm Katherine Myers, and we are proposing the Alcohol Advertisement Ordinance because it changes the perception of risk-taking behaviors. You have to be 21 to purchase the, these products anyway, 
It reminds visitors who are under 21 that they will not be served any alcohol. It reminds visitors that are over 21 that alcohol is not for minors. It may keep establishments consistent in following the law. And it tells the community that we are responsible for keeping kids safe. So finally, let's give our uh, young youth council members a round of applause. My name is AJ Garsing. I work with Ev in the uh, youth council. And uh, just want to say that the whole youth council has been very, very passionate in working with Mark Shoda, Ev, and myself, and of course Kelly, um, <coughs> in creating these ordinances. And uh, we strongly, or we hope that you strongly consider uh, passing both of them. Uh, we think they're very relevant, and like Ev mentioned, they'll, uh, they'll last a long time and benefit you in the future as well. So, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we have it on our agenda for action slides, so you guys might want to stick around. Mr. Chairman, what, uh, assuming you want to go forward with it, obviously it is a public hearing, so uh, the suggestion is one that your next meeting would be the 10th of February at 7 o'clock p.m. Okay. Uh, the next item I have, Mr. Chairman, is a confirmation from the state of Connecticut that, that we did receive a $26,412 grant uh, for the restoration of the historical